Okay, so let's learn some concepts from college algebra. I'm going to take every concept very slowly so that you can understand well and so that you feel more prepared when you go into your first college math class. So if you're looking at what I'm reading from, it's actually um, a note sheet that I've created. I'm going to leave the link in the description box so that you can go ahead and you can download it yourself. It's going to be free and you can go ahead and watch this video along with looking at that note sheet. And as I fill it in, you can fill it in as well. So I'll give you a moment if you need to, you can pause the video, download the worksheet that I have for you guys, and then we can go ahead and get started. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start with our first lesson, which is gonna be about equations. And that's gonna be the basic equations. We're gonna learn how to do one-step equations, two-step equations, equations that have parentheses in them, equations that have variables or letters on both sides, and then we're also going to learn how we can find the number of solutions an equation has. So again, we're going to take everything very slowly. You're going to watch this video. You're going to be introduced to some concepts. Some of these concepts you've seen before in high school math. Some concepts you may have not seen in a long time. And for others, this may be the first time you're being exposed to problems like this. But again, by preparing with me and by learning with me, you're going to feel prepared and not as intimidated and worried on your first day of college algebra or college math. So we're gonna look at one step equations first. And just like the name suggests, it's only gonna be an equation that you can solve with using just one step. So for example, if we had 10 plus X equals 25, you'll be able to solve this equation by only doing one step. That's why it's called one step equations. The goal is always to isolate the variable. What that means is you're going to look to see what side is the variable on. The variable is just the letter, so the x in this case. And what you're going to try to do is you're going to look at the side of the x. This is on the left side of the equal sign. And you want to get everything that is on the same side as the x to the other side. So if you look at this equation, the one thing that's causing the x to not be by itself is the 10. So what you want to do is you want to get the 10 to the opposite side. So in order to get 10 to the opposite side, you have to do the opposite of whatever is happening. So in this equation, this 10 is a positive 10. So in order to get that 10 to the other side, you have to do the opposite of addition, which is subtraction. So instead of adding 10 to both sides, we're going to subtract 10 from both sides. Those 10s are going to cancel each other out. You're going to be left with the X, bring down the equal sign, and then you're going to do 25 minus 10, which is equal to 15. So your answer is X is equal to 15. So again, this is called a one step equation because you only did one step and you were able to figure out what the variable or what the letter is equal to. X is equal to 15. Now, one question that I get a lot is, how did you know that this 10 was a positive 10? So let's go ahead and look at this again. Um, 10 plus X equals 25. How did I know this was positive? So if you're taking notes with my notes that you were able to download, the way that we know that this was positive is because there was nothing written in front of it. So on your notes, you can say when there's no sign in front of it or in front of the number, it's automatically positive. Because when you're writing positive numbers like one, five, seven, nine, you don't usually write positive one, positive five, positive seven, positive nine you just automatically know that those numbers are positive. Okay, well then how would you know that a number is negative? Well, a number is negative if it said negative 10 plus X equals five. So a negative number always has the negative sign in front of it. So if you're trying to figure out if a number is negative, it will always have a negative sign. Okay. So that's how you know if a number is positive or if a number is negative. 
Now, that's something that is very important for us to go over together because you need to know what's happening now so that you could do the opposite to get rid of it. So if you know the number is negative, you would do the opposite, which is add to both sides. If you know the number is positive, you would do the opposite, which is subtract from both sides. So it's very important to be able to determine whether a number or a constant in the equation is positive or negative. Okay, I hope you guys are taking good notes. I hope that these notes are helping you. Okay, so now the next question is, how do you know when you have to add or subtract or multiply or divide? So that's also a very good question. So if you have, let's use the same example, 10 plus X equals 25. So anytime there's a number that's not completely next to the X, it's not attached to the X, or it's not attached to the variable, it's usually separated from some by some sort of sign, you know that you're gonna either add or subtract that number to get rid of it. Again, when that number is not attached to the X, it's not side by side to that X, it's actually separated by a sign, in this case it's a, separated by a positive sign, we know that in order to get rid of this 10, we're either gonna have to add it if it's negative, or we're gonna have to do the opposite, which is just whatever it is. If it's negative, we add it. If it's a positive, we subtract it. But if you had an example that looked like this, 2x equals 10, and we wanted to get the x by itself, the two is what's causing the x to not be by itself. Well, in this situation, because it's right next to each other, they're being multiplied. So on your piece of paper, I want you to write this down. Anytime you see 2x or 4y or 3z, anytime you see a number and a variable or a letter written side by side, they're actually being multiplied. So 2x is the same as saying 2 times x. 4y is the same as saying 4 times y. 3z is the same as saying 3 times z. So whenever you see them written, and I'm going to erase this just to make it very, very clear. Anytime you see something 2x equals 10, the x and the 2, they're side by side, they're being multiplied. So in order to get rid of something that's being multiplied, you have to do the opposite. So because right now it's being times by 2, to do the opposite, to get rid of that 2, you would divide both sides by 2. So you add or subtract when the x is separated by the number, but you divide, or we're going to show, show examples where you multiply in the future in other problems, when they're squished together. So when the, the number and the variable are side by side, they're squished, that means they're being multiplied, so you have to do the opposite, which is divide. And when there's a separation, usually by a sign, that number that's separated is usually added or subtracted, depending on what the original sign is. Okay, so we went over all the technical information that we should know. Now let's apply what we know into these next few problems together. So we're gonna do these practice problems. We're gonna start with 20 plus y equals 40. Again, we're practicing one-step equations. The reason why something is called a one-step equation is because you only have to do one step in order to solve it. So we're gonna ask ourselves, what's causing this y to not be by itself? There's a 20. Now, are we going to add or subtract that 20 or multiply or divide that 20? Well, the rule that we learned is that when that 20 is not side by side with that y, it's not 20y, it's 20 plus y. When it's divided by that sign, when there's a sign in the middle, it's separated. Do you remember what we do? <clears throat> right, we either add or subtract. So now we have to figure out, are we gonna add that 20 to both sides or are we gonna subtract that 20 from both sides? Okay, so the first thing we have to ask ourselves is, is that 20 right now a positive 20 
or a negative 20? Well, it's a positive 20. Remember, because there was nothing written in front of it. So it's a positive 20. So if right now it's positive, we have to do the opposite to get rid of it, which is subtract. So we subtract 20 from both sides and we get y is equal to 20. Okay, now let's go to the next problem. Now we have to ask ourselves, what do we have to get rid of in order to get the y by itself? Again, we have to get rid of the 20. But now I'm gonna ask you, do we have to add, subtract, or do we have to divide to get that 20 by itself? Well, in this case, it's written side by side. So instead of saying 20y, you can say 20 times y. So if right now you're, you can say 20 times y, let me change this to equals 40, sorry, equals 40. If it's 20 times y and we're trying to get rid of that 20, we do the opposite. So we divide both sides by 20. And so 40 divided by 20 is 2, so y is equal to 2. So in this case, we divided. So if we now look at this last problem, I'm gonna give you a moment to try to solve it on your own. And the questions that I want you to ask yourself is, am I getting rid of that five by adding or subtracting it or by dividing it? The question you should ask yourself is, is that five right next to the variable? If the answer is yes, I divide. If it's separated by a symbol, usually a plus sign or a minus sign, then that means I'm probably adding it or subtracting it. So what do you, what should you do to get rid of that five? Well, if you said that five is being multiplied by X right now, you are correct. So to do the opposite of multiplication is division. So you divide both sides by five and you get X is equal to 20. All right, you guys. So that is one step equations. You only do one step in order to solve the equation. So 